A very good day to all of you, and welcome back. Now, this morning we are going to study Physics Form 4, a revision on light. Now, specifically, I'm going to teach you and revise with you how to draw ray diagrams for convex lens. And before I get into that, let me encourage you, young people, we can learn physics very well and understand it very well. You can learn anything. So do not be discouraged. Just follow my instructions, follow my teaching, and you will do very well. Now let us see the learning outcome for this lesson. By the end of this lesson, every one of you should be able to draw very steadily and master it well, draw ray diagrams to scale for a convex lens. You should be able to master it by the end of this lesson. But remember, in my previous lessons, I've always encouraged you, whenever you study something, you must do output revision. Do not just memorize facts, memorize diagrams. It does not help. The thing that helps most is, when you understand something, get it into your blood system, you understand it, then you will be able to do it well. And during examination, you find that it is a piece of cake. Alright, so are you ready, boys and girls? Okay, let's go. Now, in our first case, I'll deal with you only two questions this morning. So the first question is, we are given a convex lens and we have an object that is reasonably far away. So as you draw diagrams, you just have to draw the principal axis, label it, and this is our convex lens, and label it again. Now many students do not label convex lens. They have drawn the convex lens, but they just left it. Now this is very, very dangerous because we have convex lens, concave lens, and then we have concave mirror, convex mirror. You have four. And from my experience, I find that many students are confused once they have drawn the diagrams. So listen to me, write down the word convex lens. And after that, now let's say that the focal length given is 5 cm. So take the ruler, measure 5 cm. And then after that, you label capital F, which means it is the focal point of the lens. So, which means that if you look at the diagram now, from the optical center of the lens to capital F, this distance is 5 centimeters. So, focal length, 5 centimeters. Now, let's say now you have an object that is about 15 centimeters away. All right, take your ruler again. You measure the object, label it, measure 15 centimeters. So you are given this setting, now you are required to draw the diagram to obtain the image. Now many students want to memorize this. They try to memorize it, but it does not work. So what you have to do, practice. So what is the first step? The first step now is, from the top of the object, you will draw a ray parallel to the principal axis. And after that, it will cut the focal point. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right, let's, let's draw it now, step by step. So this is the first line. And after that, it will cut the focal point. So we called it, call this the first line. All right, you have done it? Okay, good. Okay, you have done it now. Now, what about the second line? It's very simple. Again, look at the top of the object. The top of the object, you will cut through the optical center of the lens and then you will draw it a long line until it intersects or cuts the first line. Okay. Now, this is what I mean. Simple, isn't it? I can see you smiling. Good. All right, it shows that you're understanding it. Remember, get all your gears ready. Now, look at this point of intersection now, the blue line and the yellow line. And now we are ready to draw the image. So that is the image. And after that, we label it. Now, remember, young people, when we draw a diagram, 
every part has to be labeled. Do not just leave it blank. Once you have labeled it, you understand it very well, which part is the object, which is the image, etc., etc. So after having drawn this diagram, this is a perfect diagram. Now remember, drawing it to scale means you measure. You cannot just draw a sketch. Now we are talking about scale drawing. And after this, it is good to write down the characteristics of the image. So what are the characteristics of this image that is produced? Alright, why don't you write it down first? Give me three characteristics. Alright, most of you would have written by now. Now the first one is, it is a real image. Now what is a real image? A real image is one that is caught on the screen or an image that is formed on the screen. So that is a real image here. And secondly, it is very obvious that you notice the arrowhead, it is inverted. All right, so the second characteristic is an inverted image. And what is a third characteristic? Normally, we write down three characteristics. Look at the size of the image. What can you say about it? Compared to the object, it is smaller. So you can write down it is a diminished image or you can write down in your own words, you can say that the image is smaller than the object. So it is acceptable. Now once again, a reminder. If in a physics test, in my question that I'm giving to you, I said, write down one characteristic. How many? One. So how many must you write down in your answer? Write down any one. Please do not write down two or three if you are asked to write one. Because if you get one right and two wrong, you can lose your marks. Or even if you get two right but one wrong, you will still lose your marks. So just answer the question. Now if you were to ask me, what is your name? Pang Sinan. I get one mark. I answer your question. So you answer the question, give one characteristic, you would give any one of these three. All right. Now, to make sure that all of you have got it and have understood what I was saying just now, let us look at example number one again. I will go through it again step by step. Now, in this question that we were discussing just now, I mentioned a few things. After drawing it, the three lines that you must have are the following. Let's take a look at this one. From the top of the object, when we drew this line just now, you need to take a note, take note of it, and know that this is the line number one that you must have. Now, why do I write down 1A? It is because this is the first part of the line that you must have, and the other line down here, I label it as 1B. Alright? I label it as 1B. So now it is very clear. The first line that you must have is 1A and 1B. Good? So if I were to mark your question and your answer, this would be your first mark, so to speak. Now let us go to the second line. From the top of the object, I will draw a line cutting through the optical center of the lens, and this would be line number 2. I label it line number 2, which is actually the second mark. So for a 3 mark question for your drawing, just on the drawing, you need to make sure that you have these lines, you have this drawn carefully. And what about the third one? Take note of this point of intersection. So from the top of this line, vertically from above, you will draw this orange line downwards with the arrow head inverted. So this would be line number 3. So in all your drawings, generally you would need to show all these lines to your teacher. And then your teacher will be a very happy man, a very happy teacher indeed. So with these three lines, you will get your three marks. Another revision is important. We need to keep on writing. What are the three characteristics again? I know I mentioned it just now, but it's good for you to write it again. Alright, just take a few seconds and write it. 
Okay, good. Looks like all of you have done it. So what is the first one? The first one is, it is a real image. And the second characteristic is, if you look at it, it is an inverted image. And lastly, if you look at the size of the image, look at the size of the image here, it is definitely smaller than the object. So, it is a diminished. And if you do not like this word, you can write down smaller than the object. Diminished. So, are you clear? Alright. With this, now I think we can proceed to question number two. I would like you to do case number two so that you understand better. Now, what is the difference between case one and case number two? For case number two, what I would like you to write down is this. I will give you a case and then you can draw it for yourself. Alright, now let me choose the ink color. Alright, you can write down the focal length of your lens. Let it be 5 centimeters. Okay, you write down 5 centimeters. And then after that, you can write down... Uh, the object distance, normally we call it U. Alright, what do you do? You write down 15 centimeters. Okay, so with this, it is good enough. Convex lens, focal length 5 centimeters, object distance 15 centimeters. Alright, now I'll give you a few minutes and you will try and draw it on your own. Okay, please try. Get your rulers, your pencils, and you do it. Then in a while, I'll come back and then I will guide you along and do it. Alright, let's go to it again. Alright, remember what I have given you just now. So first thing, let's draw it. And what is this? Label it. It is important. It is the principal axis. And after that, we draw our lens. Label it convex lens. And thirdly, we have already determined that our focal length is 5 cm. So we measure from the optical center to capital F. It is 5 cm. It has to be drawn to scale. Now remember, this is F and this is 2F. 2F means it is 10 centimeters away from the optical center in this case. So our we have an object that is over here now. Now this object that you have drawn, just now I mentioned that it is supposed to be 15 cm. Alright? Okay, let's say, uh, okay, we changed from 15 cm we put it as about 8 centimeters. Now, in this case, it is between F and 2F. All right? So, let it be about 8 centimeters. Okay? So, that is the object. So, again, you draw those lines. Okay? Now, that is the first line. Now, what about the second line? The second line, it has to cut through the optical center. Okay? And what is the third line now? It is the image. Look at this point here, point of intersection. You get the image. Alright? So, after that you label the image. You have everything done correctly now. And now we have to label it. Alright? So, what is the characteristic or what are the characteristics of the image? It is real. The second one is, again, it is inverted. And finally, the third one is, look at the image, it is much larger than the object. So you can say it is an enlarged image or a magnified image. Okay. Now to make sure that we understand this well, it is good to label the lines again. Alright, let's label it again.
Now look at this diagram again. What is the first line that is important in what we have done? This is the first line. Alright, by now all of you should be able to do it. This is 1A. Now this should be 1B. So this is the first important line. Now what is the second line? It is this. The blue one, I can label it as number 2. And what is the third line? The third line is this. The image line. Alright, so this is number 3. So, 1A, 1B, the first important line, second important line, and third important line. So, with this, you have got a perfect drawing for the ray diagram. And again, it is good for you to write down. Just revise over and over again. What kind of an image is this? It is a real image. Write down. And what else? It is an inverted image. And finally, what is it? It is an enlarged image. Okay, it is an enlarged image. Now with this, I'm sure you would have understood it very well. Alright, so let us go back and look at our learning outcome. Now what have you done actually for the whole lesson? Now you are able to draw a ray diagram according uh, to scale. You draw to scale a ray diagram, a ray diagram for a convex lens. Now there is another section which I will explain in my next lesson. That is for a different position of the object. Today we only cover two different distances. So with this, I hope that you will go back, look at questions, practice drawing again, and I'm sure you will do well. Alright, so with this, I would like to say thank you very much, and may God bless you in your progress in your physics. Bye.